Hello everybody, it's Osha Ziz here. I'm going to try to cram a whole lot of stuff in a real, uh, hopefully short video. What you're looking right here is a simple method of taking some tubing, like this right here, and cutting you off a little section. Makes a nifty adjustable spark gap. And uh, I wanted to uh, show you that because, uh, like I said, it's a simple way to make a spark gap, but it, they're used uh, all the way through what I'm fixing to show you now. And so, with that said, I'll take you on a, a bit of a bumpy ride. I made a bunch of different ones of those. Anyway, let's get that out of the way. All right, what you're looking at right here is a combination coil capacitor so it started off i remember what gauge wire is i just kind of wound it never uh did any measurements on that it's just uh testing out something but anyway uh it starts off the from this right down here goes up it's coil wire and it's uh has a built-in capacitor that is made with uh aluminum welding wire tig wire and then the outside is aluminum tape with uh, plastic uh, in between there for the uh, um, separator there. Anyway, what I got going on here is I got another capacitor which is made out of just a simple jar with uh, some aluminum inside and aluminum foil tape on the outside which looks like it's coming off of here there. And uh, so I've got that run from my ground wire which runs all the way through the house and out into the dirt <laughs> and so the capacitor is the in series with the ground wire going it go, starts from the ground wire goes into the capacitor goes out to that coil right there and then uh, from there it goes on the uh, this side of the uh, spark gap and then the other part of the capacitor goes through this spark gap onto the opposite side of the spark gap so you got a spark gap from the ground and you got a spark gap from the top of this uh, coil right here so it's got like a dual spark gap going on and then moving up here i've got a nifty fluorescent bulb right here running into a coil there's a transformer core coil in here that I took and wound uh, copper wire, some pretty heavy gauge of copper wire, like you see that red wire right there, all the way around it. And then I looped, before that, I looped uh, these two coils right here. And so, what happens here is uh, when this capacitor gets charged up, it jumps across that spark gap, uh, energizes this first coil right here, which energizes the uh, fine, finer windings inside and also energizes these two coils at the same time. Now that tower right there and this one right here and that one right there are all ran in series going into this coil pack that I put together. And from there I have uh, this nifty little um, I'm going to call it a mechanical oscillator spark gap. <laughs> What's going on here is I have this uh, nifty spring with a piece of uh, aluminum foil hooked to a uh, heat sink which is grounded to the base of this right here. Um, from that point inside of this tube all the way around to the opposite side is a really super tightly wound coil of wire that uh, comes to this little uh, neon bulb right here and so you'll be able to see that uh, it's uh, energizing because that little bulb there will light up also on this side which I have to readjust here is a spark gap going from the base up here and the reason for that is it shortens the gap because if I don't have this spark gap on there the arc will go from here to here it'll leap clear across right here 
And what I'm using to power this all up together is this Van de Graaff generator. So I'm using static energy to energize this entire system and uh, make a crude attempt of getting a little bit of wireless out of it. All right, now let me readjust my camera here. Do, 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 do. All right, well, that's not a bad view right there. I could get a little bit better. Let me try to kill some lighting in here. All right. Okay, I'm going to plug in the Van de Graaff generator. You'll start hearing a lot of popping. <coughs> well, maybe you won't hear a lot of popping. It's probably not as loud for you as it is for me. All right. Well, you'll notice First we'll look down here at the dual spark gap system. When the uh, coil with the capacitor charges up, it'll arc across there on this side. And when it's not charged up, the other one will pull directly from the ground. And you should be able to see Every time that pulses, that light gets a little brighter right there. Now, I don't have it adjusted as well as I did in the other room again. But you can see on this side over here, let me see if I can get this in closer. I hope it's not messing with the camera. You can see this little neon bulb down here. Ah! That's lighting up every time it pulses. Now keep in mind that that coil that's in. Wouch! See that arc jump across my finger? <laughs> that coil inside isn't making contact with that copper tubing, so it's all static energy that's building up. Watch this. Instead of using my finger there. <laughs> All right, that's just all static energy jumping through that doggone insulation of that wire. And this is off of the uh, coil, the copper coil itself. And if you notice up here, it's energizing, it's energizing that tube every so often. Not as well as I would have hoped. But, once again, I got to get the spark gap suggested on there. Also, if you look up here, it looks like it's already messing with my camera. You'll see that, I don't know if you can see that or not. Doggone it. Let me put this back over here. The longer it runs, the harder those pulses it get. See if you can see this right here. It's wanting to attract to my hand. And actually you can feel a, a lot of ion wind coming off of that, that static buildup right there. Oh, doggone it. So, I don't know if you can see that very well. Looks like it's messing with my camera. I'm going to have to back up. Believe it or not, it is putting out a pretty, pretty strong pulse. Let's 
hoping not to have this video take so long. You can see it's definitely pulsing those two coils right there. Not a whole lot, as much as I would like it to. But um, if you get it adjusted just right, and can't tell if you can see that or not. Okay, before I go too, too much further, let me show you something here. need some light on this subject. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reach down here, hope not to get the crud shocked out of me. And I'm going to slide this just a hair closer, shorten that gap, get it to uh, fire a little faster. I don't know if you can see that or not. And blast it. pulsing back and forth again. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. But I've got it. Remember I told you about that little spring? You gotta get it just in the right spot. And it'll start oscillating. Let's back it up just a hair. See if that makes a difference. Can't tell. You'll whenever you see that uh, other fluorescent bulb down there finally fire up, that's every time that one spark got from the capacitor. Uh, pulses. It just did it. Let's see if we can get it to do it again without me getting the crud shocked out of myself. I'm going to move that out a little bit. <laughs> there it goes. Alright, well, I'm not sure if I'm like, getting all this on there, whether or not it's going to be sounding like. Uh, me talking in slow motion when my camera always messes up. But either way, that's just using the Van de Graaff generator. The main thing is, uh, if you notice that spring going on down there, let me turn one of these lights on. Alright. Watch really close and you can see that spring. It, uh, it'll sit there and uh, bounce back and forth and, and tap out. Apologize for the rough video. I had it just slightly better adjusted in the other room, but every time I move. Uh. Alright, well, that's been long enough, I guess. I hope you learned something out of it. You can make a uh, springy type mechanical oscillator using uh, that little system that I showed you right there. You can make some adjustable spark gaps with some hose and some other deal. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, every time, uh, if I take 
that coil there out of the way where I've only got a single spark gap. I can literally stretch that down there. See where those two are arcing right down in here. If I take one of them out of the system, I can uh, stretch that spark gap out to where I have a, a arc this long. And the farther away that arc is using the static, uh, it seems to pulse those light bulbs a lot harder. But I tried something different, and that's why this video came out the way it did. Anyway, peace and love, everybody. Take care.